Before we get started, I reckon everybody's got a new phone number and how to get to where we're reading this morning. So we got all right. You give it to Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Keep uh keep Tammy in your prayers. She's uh been in a lot of pain lately. Sometimes she gets not goes to the stores and she gets back in a lot of pain for her. Lower back and things in her legs. I'm just hoping for the doctor tomorrow to see if maybe she needs to lower back. Get some for the doctor. See what's going on. If you would turn with me in Deuteronomy this morning, I'm going to read one verse in Deuteronomy and then I'm going to go to. Last chapter in Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 
21. I didn't, I didn't say what. That's right. Uh, all right. Chapter 4. Four. <laughs> verse 2. Yeah. Chapter 4 what? Verse 2. Okay. This is uh, been on my mind all week. Every time I turn on the TV this week, I see a preacher reading out the book instead of the Bible. And the Bible plainly tells us in numerous places that we are not to add to the book and we're not to take away from the book. That's right. And every version of the Bible besides the King James either takes away or adds to Sometimes both. Changes the whole meaning. I know the NIV calls Satan day star. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is a day star. Jesus is a, is a light. Satan tells us darkness. There ain't no light about Satan. Then around chapter 2 says, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye <coughs> diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Okay. Alright, let's turn over to Revelation. Chapter 22, starting in verse 18. Chapter 22, you said? Yeah, life chapter. Amen. 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Fathers, we come to you this morning, Lord. Lord, I realize, Lord, that this is a touchy subject with a lot of people. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would show them, God, the scriptures they need to read. Lord, let them study and discern the Bible, Lord, that you meant it to be studied and discerned. Father, I give you the praise and glory for it all in Jesus. Amen. I've got a list here because there's so many of them. That I wrote down Deuteronomy chapter 12 and 32. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, <coughs> nor diminish from it. 
Deuteronomy 13 tells us. <coughs> if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and given thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, nor that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. So trust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is thine own soul, entice thee, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy father. Namely, the gods of the people which are around about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. But thou shalt not consent unto him, nor, her, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou aspire, neither, now, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died, because he has sought to trust to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Just about every church you go to now, the preacher will get up and start talking, and he'll read from a book that is ungodly. Now these scriptures I've read uh, read this morning are proof that we are to stick with one Bible <laughs> that is the true word of God. These preachers that are preaching out of NIVs or NSVs, I don't know all the books that they come out with, but the American Standard Version, I think, or the AMP Bible, or, or any other book is preaching false prophecy. <laughs> because words have been changed you can change one word in a verse and give that verse a whole different meaning. Right. Now that's not the word of God if you change a verse, one word in that verse to give it a different meaning. That's not the word of God. That's your version of the word of God. It's, it's a lie. It's a lie. Straight from the pits of hell. And Satan's the author of it. I 
I could take and rewrite this whole book and send it to a publishing company and within 60 days, maybe 90 days, I could have me a new Bible and start selling it. And people would probably flock to it. Why? They're a non-believer. Exactly. People want to hear something that sugarcoat it. They want to hear something that waters down. They don't want to hear the true word of God. Why? Because they're not living according to the word of God. That's all these other books was written for, is to justify the way they want to live. Because they don't want to live a godless, a godly life. They want to live a godless life. They want to do what they want to do. They think it's all right. But the Bible plainly tells us in Revelation that if a man adds to the book of life, the Bible, God's going to add the plague to him. If God takes, or if man takes away, takes anything out of the Bible, God's going to take his name out of the book of life. The Bible plainly says that. That's not what Jerry said. That's what God said. Now, I don't know if one man wrote these other books, or I don't know if it was a group of people or what. But I'd hate to, I'd hate to be one of those people. Because I believe what the Bible says. If they take away, God's going to take their name out of the book of life. Let me ask you a question. Okay. You know, we use King James Version here before I got here. What does the Jehovah's Witness use? What kind of Bible do they use? They have their own Bible, as far as I know. They have their own Bible. That's one about that, you know. That's, that's like the Mormons. They have their own Bible. The Catholic Church uses a different Bible than what we use. And to me, an, an organization, I won't call them a religion, an organization that comes out with their own Bible ain't nothing more than a cult. That ain't no worse than Jim Jones or David Koresh. It's a cult. Don't ever, ever let somebody in your house that's carrying a different Bible than the King James Bible. Because they're, they're slick talkers. They can convince you without you even realizing. They can convince you of things that's not even in the Bible. They are trained to do that. And if you're sitting in a church this morning and your preacher's not reading out of the King James Version, you need to get out of that church. If you're using a Bible or a book that's not the King James Version, in Revelations, it says if you take away Your name's going to be taken out of the book of life. Now, the question I have, if you're using that book and you believe what that book says, does that mean your name's going to be taken out if you've been born again? 
Well, that's, well, that's true. That's true, Daniel. If you were born again, truly, you shouldn't have no interest in that book. Truly born again, you shouldn't have no interest in any other book. You see, James Bird. I've had people give me an ID before. I've never opened it. You know where they go? The garbage can. I'm not going to let the devil entice me with false doctrine. And that's what happens. I've heard preachers say, well, I, I've got an NIV or I just... If you go to that book for references, that means you believe in that book. Christian ain't got no, a true born again Christian has no reason to open a book that's authored by Satan. I used to have a list of verses that the NIV had taken out. And it was up in the hundreds of verses that don't even appear. And what does that do? That changes the whole story in that chapter. And when you call Satan the day star, that's deception. Because there's no lie about Satan. Satan is on the darkness. And he's wanting to pull you in to his darkness by making you believe that it's okay to use that book. But it's not. There's going to be a lot of so-called Christians that claim to be Christian that are in that book. I believe they're going to end up in hell. Now this may get, may get me kicked off YouTube again. But that's okay. Because I'm not compromising God's word. Amen. If it's in the Bible, it's Bible. If it's in the Bible, it needs to be true. Yeah. Satan has got so many people deceived. Church people. Deceived. Well, I need this to, because it's easier to understand. What you're understanding is probably something that ain't even in the real Bible. It's another man's theory on what the Bible should have said instead of what it does say. I had a man to tell me not long ago that he, he didn't believe everything that was in the Bible. The only thing I could tell him, man, you better get your heart right. Because you got to believe the Bible from the first word to the last word. If it's in the Bible, you better believe it. That's right. If you don't believe it, there's something wrong in your heart. Bring it down on me. If you can't believe the Bible, I would say there's no salvation. If you can't believe the Bible. And I'll stand on that to the day I die. If you can't believe what's in the Bible, you ain't got salvation. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ grace of Christ into another gospel which is not another but there may 
but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of God. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Matthew 5 and 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew 24 and 24 says, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall gr show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And that's what these preachers are doing. They're preaching out of these false books. They're deceiving. People, we are to be so grounded in the Word of God that if a preacher stands up and starts reading out of some perverted book that calls itself the Holy Bible, we ought to be able to know it. That's why every Christian should be carrying their Bible when they go to church. They should be opening their Bible when the preacher's reading. They ought to be following him. To know he is reading from God's holy word, not something somebody wrote because they don't believe this is sin, they don't believe that is sin. And you can live any way as long as you come to church and put your hundred dollars in or your two hundred dollars in or whatever. That's not being a Christian. Being a Christian is knowing the word of God. Knowing what's right and what's wrong. Study that Bible. Show thyself approved. The Bible tells us to study Show ourselves free. I could go down to the library tomorrow, and I'm sure they got every version of the Bible down there. I could get one of those out, check it out, go home, study it, come up here next Sunday, well, Sunday after next, and Preach you a message that will be pleasing to your ears. But every bit of it will be nothing but lies. Deception. And if everybody come and left their Bible at home, 
Oh, I know he's busy. If you know the Bible, you'll be able to tell. When I start reading, if I'm reading <laughs> from God's holy word. And I'm not going to test it because I'm not going to read one of these books to begin with. I'm not going to study out of out of Satan's book to bring it to my church. Our church. I'm not going to say my church, our church. If I'm going to stand here behind this pulpit, I'm going to be preaching from God's holy word, the King James Version. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to water it down. Just, just so I can say, boy, they like my message today. It don't matter to me if you like it or you hate it. If you're where you need to be with God, you're going to like it. Period. Now, I may make a mistake, and I'm sure Brother Daniel, <coughs> Brother Philip, and Brother Ray will set me straight if I make a mistake. And that's okay. I expect them to. But I've made mistakes. I'm human. That's why I like for everybody to take part in the service. I don't look at it if you're calling me down. I don't look at it as you're trying to add to the message. If God puts something on your heart, say it. Or if you see I'm saying something that ain't true, tell me. I want to know. So I don't make that mistake again. You know, people, a lot of times when, they, when they're reading, now there's a difference in reading and study. But a lot of people, a lot of preachers, they'll go down and read a verse or two. Well, that's one I'm going to preach on this week. Did it come from God? Or did it come from self? I'm going to make sure that what you hear on Sunday morning is what God's laid on my heart. I pray about it. I seek his wisdom. I don't just go down there, well, this verse looks good. I'll just preach this this way. They may be preachers like that. I don't know. But when I'm preaching a message, I'm trying my best to preach what God has laid on my heart And I'm trying to preach what comes out of the King James Version. You don't ever have to worry about this old boy bringing an NIV or an Amplified or anything else. I've got two Bibles, one I keep here at the church. I've got three or four at home. I've got one on my computer. I got one on my, my phone, which I don't use my, my cell phone no more, but it's still there. But they're all King James Version. If I'm going to be reading the Bible, I want it to be the closest thing we have 
to what God inspired. And that is the King James Version. It was the first version ever written in English. And I believe God waited on King James to have it written. For people to have something that they could understand. I mean, there's things in the Bible that I don't understand. There's things in the Bible I know that each one of you don't understand. And you will never understand it. Unless God gives it to you. Or if he don't give it to you while you're living here on earth, I believe when we get to heaven, it'll all be understood. Everything that's in this Bible that we can't bring our minds to understand will be revealed when we get to heaven. And I'm begging if anybody has another book in their house besides the King James Version, throw it away. Don't even look at it. Don't open it up and read it because all it is is deception. They change the words around. They add to it. They take verses out that changes the whole meaning of the chapter. <coughs> and that's not God's word. It's a book. And it's straight out of the pits of hell because Satan wants to deceive people. <coughs> and there's people that will listen to them and start writing. Then they'll send it off to a publishing company and get a copyright on it <coughs> and put it in the store. And say, there goes everybody. They sell a million copies in a week. That don't make it right. Any book, and it's not King James Version, it is not the Word of God. <clears throat> I ain't going to argue with you to say it ain't. <coughs> All I can do is stay true to my beliefs. I can't force nobody to change their mind. I don't have that power. But I know one that does. If I walk into a church and pick up a Bible and it don't say King James Version, I'm not going to say <laughs> Of that church service that I walked into. Because I don't want to hear false prophecy. If I want to hear false prophecy, the only thing I got to do is go home and turn the TV on. I don't need to be going to a church that's not preaching or not teaching God's Word. I want no part of it. And I hope everybody that's watching, everybody that's listening on the radio, I hope and pray that if you're not attending the King James Version of Church, you will get out of it. Be set from church to live and find you a good Bible believing church. Well, 
Preacher, we live in age race. We ain't nothing like that going on here. You'd be surprised. I can take you right now to six different churches that are not preaching about Jesus on the road. And I'm not going to mention them. I'm not here to bash nobody. But I can take you to six different churches in Andrews and Murphy that I know of that's not preaching the true word of God. They're preaching deception. They're being false prophets. The world's full of them. People, we need we need to learn that Bible. We need to study that Bible. Study to show thyself approved. But study to know when someone is deceiving you. What they're preaching or what they're teaching. That's a message this morning. I hope somebody got something good out of it. But the Bible tells us so many times to be careful not to be deceived.